Chapter sixty three of Women of History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Arlene Stebbins. Women of History by Anonymous. Chapter sixty three. Madame du Deffon. Born sixteen ninety seven, died seventeen eighty. Geoffrey. A lady who was left a widow, with a moderate fortune, and a great reputation for wit, about 1750, and soon after gave up her hotel, and retired to apartments in the convent de St. Joseph, where she continued to receive almost every evening whoever was most distinguished in Paris for rank, talent, or accomplishment. Having become almost blind in a few years, she found she required the attendance of some intelligent young woman who might read and write for her, and assist in doing the honours of her conversazione. For this purpose she cast her eyes on Mademoiselle Lespinas, the illegitimate daughter of a man of rank who had been boarded in the same convent, and was for some time delighted with her selection. By and by, however, she found that her young companion began to engross more of the notice of her visitors than she thought suitable, and parted from her with violent, ungenerous, and implacable displeasure. Mademoiselle de l'Espinas, however, carried with her the admiration of the greater part of her patroness circle, and having obtained a small pension from the government, opened her own doors to a society no less brilliant than that into which she had been initiated by Madame du Deffant. The fatigue, however, which she had undergone in reading the old marchioness asleep had irreparably injured her health, which was still more impaired by the agitations of her own inflammable and ambitious spirit, and she died before she had attained middle age, about 1776, leaving on the minds of all the most eminent men of France an impression of talent, and of ardour of imagination which seems to have been considered as without example. Madame du Deffon continued to preside in her circle until a period of extreme old age, and died in 1780 in full possession of her faculties. Madame du Deffon was the wittiest, the most selfish, and the most ennuyé of the whole party. Her wit, to be sure, is very enviable and very entertaining, but it is really consolatory to common mortals to find out how little it could amuse its possessor. This did not proceed in her, however, from the fastidious which is sometimes supposed to arise from a long familiarity with excellence, so much as from a long habit of selfishness, or rather from a radical want of heart or affection. La Harpe says of her that it was difficult for any one to have less sensibility and more egotism. With all this she was greatly given to gallantry in her youth, though her attachments, it would seem, were of a kind not very likely to interfere with her peace of mind. The very first evening her first lover died, after an intimacy of twenty years, La Harpe assures us that she came to supper at a grand company at Madame de Marchius where I was, and that, speaking of the loss she had sustained, she said, Alas, he died at six o'clock, otherwise you would not have seen me here. She is also recorded to have frequently declared that she could never bring herself to love anything, though, in order to take every possible chance, she had several times attempted to become devotee, but with no success. This, we have no doubt, is the secret of her ennui, and a fine example it is of the utter worthlessness of all talent, accomplishment, and glory, when disconnected with those feelings of kindness and generosity, which are of themselves sufficient for happiness. Madame du Deffon, however, must have been delightful to those who sought only for amusement. Her tone is admirable, her wit flowing and natural, and though a little given to detraction and not a little importunate and exigeante toward those on whose complaisance she had claims, there is always an air of politeness in her raillery, and of knowledge of the world in her murmurs, that prevents them from being either wearisome or offensive. End of chapter 63